Okay, today I'm decluttering a bunch of exercise stuff. Not that I don't exercise, exercise is important, and actually I do exercise pretty regularly. But my main exercises right now are swimming and, um, and doing cardio with my VR. And neither of those things requires any extra equipment. So, other than, you know, my goggles and my VR headset. So here, it's an old jump rope. Um, my jump roping days are over. I don't like jumping. Um, I think I never did, but um, but that was just part of my old routine with my trainer. Um, so I'm getting rid of the jump rope. Also getting rid of this resistance band for doing, uh, what do you call it, curls. Um, because again, I don't use it on my own. I used it when I was working out with my trainer, Ace, outside in the park. But I don't do that anymore, so I don't need these. If I did want to do biceps curls, guess what? I would go downstairs to the nice gym in my building and use their equipment. Um, I never get the impulse in my apartment to whip out the old resistance band and knock out some biceps curls. Um, that just never happens, so I need to let these go. Plus, resistance bands are pretty good, but they freak me out because I'm always scared they're going to break and hit me in the face. Um, so there's that. Here's another resistance band that I never use. Again, they're, um, they're handy, but they're only handy if you use them. So I need to get rid of it because it's just been in a bag in a storage bin for years. And here's another one. And here's another resistance band. I think they must have come in a kit. And here is a little ab wheel, um, ab roller. You just like kneel on the floor and like roll back and forth and just use your abs. It's a pretty fun exercise for me. I think it's fun because it's easy for me. Um, but the only time I would use it is when I was working out with my trainer outside in the park, which I don't do anymore. Um, so it's time to let go of the ab wheel. And here's this 12 pound medicine ball. Um, I, I enjoyed the medicine ball workout. You can, you know, throw it over your head and do crunches and have someone toss it at you while you're doing crunches. It was a lot of fun, but guess what? I don't use it on my own. I only used it when I was training outside in the park with my trainer. So it's time to let the medicine ball go because it's only useful if you use it. And again, at this point in my life, I'm swimming, I'm doing the VR. If I want to do strength training, I'm just going to go downstairs and use the equipment in the gym. Um, there's nowhere in my apartment. I can't be, I can't be pounding the 12 pound medicine ball on the floor in my apartment. That's not going to work. And, um, it's, it's not really the kind of neighborhood that I feel like going out on the street and doing it on the sidewalk. So where am I even gonna throw around this medicine ball? Um, nowhere right now. And I don't want to hold on to it for a maybe someday, because realistically, maybe someday, um, no, the older I get, I'm not going to be hauling this 12 pound medicine ball anywhere. Those days are over. Also, it's time to get rid of the boxing gloves. I'm not really a boxer. The reason I had them is yes, from my old days working out with my trainer in the park because part of our workout involved boxing. And um, and shared boxing gloves get kind of stinky and disgusting. So that's why I had my own so that I only had to deal with my own stinky disgustingness which wasn't that stinky because my hands don't really sweat that much but um but anyway that's what they were for and they're perfectly good boxing gloves so I thought well I'll hang on to them just in case but guess what I'm not going to a boxing gym and I'm not working out with a trainer outside anymore 
Um, and I do get most of my cardio from sort of boxing, but it's all VR boxing, so I don't need real gloves. I'm just holding the controllers. And I'm not motivated enough to like strap the controllers to real gloves just for the extra quarter pound or whatever of weight of resistance. So that's just not gonna happen. So I have to let go of the fantasy and let somebody else use the gloves. So that's the exercise stuff. And then um, I did find a little more sentimental stuff. Throw in the mix while we're at it. Here's some ancient, really ancient um, photograph negatives. These are from actually my great grandma. So these are very old, but guess what? I have the actual photographs that go with every single one of these and I've already digitized them and I've shared them already with family members and I've put them on the cloud and everything. So they exist and they're dissipated and spread out and distributed among all the people who could possibly care. So um, all the people in these pictures, most of the people in these pictures, maybe everybody in these pictures is dead now. Um, even the houses in this picture, in these pictures, even the house in these pictures um, has been like bulldozed and rebuilt and like so nothing none of this exists anymore so you know when i'm gone nobody will even know what these are and um you know there's not going to be a dr kim museum or a dr kim's family museum or anything so nobody needs these old negatives and here's a pack of something like negatives there. It's on x-ray film, but these are old um, curly photographs that I took in my first practice. They're all of, of my hands. Um, they're not that meaningful to anybody. I can talk about them. Nobody needs the actual original images. Um, it's kind of a pseudoscience-y kind of thing. I don't wanna, I don't like to push, put, I don't like to push that kind of thing anyway. Um, they're just they're just interesting from a story point of view so I don't need to hang on to 27 28 year old interesting things that I could just talk about found a few old birthday cards and stuff from family and old lovers and um, I don't need to hang on to them anymore some of you might know that technically I actually wrote my first book in 1994 and it was also a stick figure kind of book, surprise, surprise. And here is the original artwork. So I saved all that original art because again, I thought maybe there would be a Dr. Kim museum someday, or maybe I would want to reprint this book and use the original art. Um, but guess what? This book didn't totally age that well. There was an offensive page in it that turns out was um, even more offensive than I thought at the time. So I don't know that this book will ever again see the light of day. And like many paper-based things, I actually have a scan of the art, and if I were to reproduce anything, it would just be from the digital scans anyway. It wouldn't be from the um, paper. So, um, so finally, I'm gonna get rid of the paper. I don't need these originals. Nobody needs these originals. They can go away. So, Kind of related to the non-existent Dr. Kim Museum is the Dr. Kim documentary. I love film festivals. I love documentaries. And whenever I see a good documentary, I'm always amazed at how the hell did they find all that old footage. So I save a bunch of stuff thinking, wouldn't this be valuable someday if I ever wanted to make a documentary about my life? 
And thus, we have things like this. These are all CD recordings of my psychotherapy sessions with my old therapist, Jana. I have never listened to any of these, and I don't think I ever will. They were from a very dark, dark time in my life, when I was thinking about whether I should transition to male or whether I should just save everyone the trouble and just kill myself. My son was just two years old at the time. Not only would I not want to listen to these sessions, but I would never ever want my son to listen to these. Why give someone even more pain and trauma than they already picked up on their own? To make things even more tragic, this therapist, Jana, committed suicide herself while we were actively working together. If anyone wants to do a Dr. Kim documentary, they will just have to find other material. These dark psychotherapy sessions are heading to the shredder today. Okay, bathroom stuff. Sometimes it's just the marketing that gets to you. I've got this two-thirds full bottle of fancy bubble bath that's been sitting in my bathroom cabinet for at least three years. I can't throw this away. Listen to this. Dr. Teal's foaming bath with pure Epsom salt. Activated charcoal and Hawaiian black lava salt. Activated charcoal and black lava salt help cleanse and renew skin. Long-lasting bubbles gently cleanse. How could I get rid of this? But when I open it, and I smell it, it smells like any other generic, heavily scented bath product. If I was blindfolded, this could be some men's all-in-one shampoo slash body wash for all I know. It's actually not that special. And that's why I haven't opened it in over three years. And probably the only reason it got used beyond that first time was I felt guilty for spending my money on it in the first place. Taking a bath is already a hassle. I feel guilty about using all that water here in drought-prone California. Plus, my bathtub is pitifully small for my size. The truth is, I probably take two baths a year, and I'm not going to use this bad bubble bath. So, bye bye bad bubble bath. <laughs>